front. The man God is a candidate for a godhood within the reach. The man God is candidate for godhood within the reach of every man and has special godlike qualities of goodness and spiritual strength, which set him far apart from ordinary men. He is the strong runner in the race of life and one who never withholds a helping hand from a laggard. Such men are rarities indeed, yet they are destined rulers of the world, the vanguard the march towards godhood. Their day will come as surely as the sun rises above the treetops. It's so in the book of Lucius of the Colburn Bible. This is the 10th. Wow. The virtue of the man God lies in his strong tendency towards goodness and keen sense of judgment and justice. He knows when to stand firm and give way and when to say this is enough. Learning to say this is enough. Learning to say no is like, say like, Honor the energy. Notwithstanding this, he always inclines towards peace and reconciliation. Yada, yada, yada. This is a crazy chapter. Why did you say yada, yada, yada? I just. I don't know. Peace and reconciliation sounds pretty cool. Man God so treads with soft footfalls, but he steps from mountaintop to mountaintop. He prevails by reason and example, and not by force. He's a natural leader of men. Though I abide by the teachings, I cannot see that it is wrong to honor the names of great men who inspire loyalty and obedience and who restore peace and justice. I would let the very names of the man God ring out to fill the wicked and dread and righteous with contentment, the wicked with dread. However, the true man God is not recognized among the world leaders and is not even sought for high positions. Perhaps it is best. The day of the man God will come and the nation which honors him will be raised above the others. But it is for the nation to bring forth the man God and not for the man God, God to bring forth the nation. Whoa. It is for the nation to bring forth the man God and not the man God to bring forth the nation. The nation that of people who unite catch the synchronicity, ride the wave. They create a nation. That nation gives birth to the man God. Like, because it's like prosperous environment to rise from. And this is crazy. So this is like the, the following chapter. And it's a lot of prophecy. 11.3 um, is where it kind of starts getting crazy. The righteous man will be held up to scorn. And this is of the future. And this is written thousands of years ago in the Egyptian bronze book, ancient Egyptian bronze book, right? This is from like before Egypt. It's crazy. This is like stories passed on. The righteous man will be held up to scorn and the irreligious will be deemed wise. Those with twisted minds will be held intelligent. And those who declare that good can only serve a worldly end will be considered righteous and this will result from spiritual poverty or lack of enlightenment. Yet they, they will declare themselves rich and enlightened. They will impov those impoverished cannot survive themselves. The impoverished cannot survive themselves with grandeur. Um, consideration for the soul spirit will be non-existent and belief in its immortality will be treated as just the mind of man will either be set on worldly things or clouded by a fog of spiritual darkness. There will be no respect for spirituality. There will be persecutions and wars, riots and looting, and all manner of deceit and oppression will be practiced in the name of angry and revengeful gods. Wow. <laughs> Worse still, all this will be practiced in the name of good, and the men will blindly accept what they are told and execute orders running contrary to their natures. When spirituality has reached its lowest ebb and religion has decayed, the wheel will, will turn again. Reference like to the great turn of the wheel. Right. Like in golden Kali age. Yuga to the Satyr Yuga, the age of truth, the golden age. Yeah. Man will either rise up with an influx of spiritual regeneration or go down and utterly perish in the dark depths of moral degeneracy. The world cannot be permitted to remain a spiritually festering sore, failing to serve any purpose. 
There are, there are things buried in the future, but with which it is unprofitable to deal. So what said must suffice, mm -hmm. suffice. Better by far to deal with the problems of today, though even these are less important than learning the secrets of the true way. Colburn Bible is all about the great path of the true way. Mm -hmm. The awakened soul spirit of man becomes filled with a yearning not there before. An overwhelming desire for constant communication or unity with the sphere of the Holy Spirit. Wow, that's just facts. It's a yearning, like that connection. Everything I've been like philosophizing about lately is about connection and moving with connection, like in coaching. Like that's what right. we, me and my people talk about is like, what's your level of connection to something greater than you? And it's like, you know, microdosing shrooms and going on those hikes. It's all about like our connection to the Holy Spirit and like feeling like we're a part of the life all around us. You know, it's like the constant yearning. Mm. As this manifests more strongly and desires and inclinations tend towards tend to disappear, the soul spirit grows from strength to strength. Since the earth is the work of the Supreme Spirit, he who cherishes and improves it or adds to its beauty and goodness becomes an assistant to the creator, a vessel for the creator. This is a position all should aspire to, for the earth must be uncouth and unadorned. Those who benefit most from life are those who serve it best. Wow. Like fulfillment comes from service. How do you serve best? You know what I mean? Like how do you let God move in you? I have spoken of the man God, of the very few who are gifted with the purity of mind and high intellect. Those who are, those are the ones who should marshal the forces of mankind kind to serve the creator but all too often good men are not great men and great men not good or great men good as things are the man who is both good and great is a rarity whoa good mean meaning morally pure great means one who strives to be spiritual means living life to the fullest in its wildest sense making conscious contact not only with the sphere of matter and mortality, but also with the sphere of the Holy Spirit, as this means that the spiritual man differs from ordinary man. The crowd is not able to understand him, and often he is treated with scorn. This does not deter the spiritual man, who knows that mockery and scorn of the crowd are usually directed against someone superior to it. Higher men of Nietzsche. When I... When I was held up to ridicule, scorned, and even believed mad, I felt flattered. Fox. Been there, done that. Reality and truth are not to be found on earth, though man, being more than mortal, can conceive their existence. Reality and truth are not to be found on earth. This is exact reflection of Hermes and Asclepius, like uh, you know, the divine Pymander. And he talks about truth is never seen in matter. And he talks about knowledge being the, the, like the conquest or revelation of mystery, right? And the mystery is the, is the knowledge of true things. And the knowledge of true yeah. things is never physical. Right. right. It's not like knowledge of how a tree grows. It's knowledge of like the, the, the principle, like the energetic happenings going on, like the deeper core yin and yangs occurring within the seed and within the spark right. and into the flower of life. And you know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a deeper thing that governs reality. But all this stuff changes out here. And it's like, it's not yeah, so like reality and truth are not, never found on earth. Though man be more than mortal, be more than mortal, can conceive their existence. They can conceive of truth and reality. Wow. And, that's, and that's the conception of God. And some may even be granted a divine vision of them. How can such qualities exist in this sphere where good is adultered with ev evil? And when good is adultered with evil, the knowledge of good and evil becomes scarce and far between. The knowledge of good and evil is what allows you to see and like make decisions. Think about every decision that we struggle with, every choice you can't make. It's because you don't know which, like, you don't know 
if the principles that are creating that option or that decision mm -hmm. are the principles rooted in good or evil because we don't have the direct knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. It's really nuts. I hear it. How can any, uh, where is, where there is no stability, where pain, sorrow, decay, and change press it on every side, how can any unstable, unstable, changeable thing be real? I just said that. How can it be true to itself? Everything that is unstable changes and therefore is false to itself and false is unreal. God is realness. Nothing perishable is true. Nothing in transit is true. Wow. And this, and this gets back to like the causal body. Like we are literally still. We are still in our spirit. Silent. We're just like in the part of the universe, right? And we're like dreaming into ourselves. It's really nuts. And like we're like dreaming this into existence essentially. Or like it's kind of like you're in a simulation to some degree. But like a spiritual one. Yeah. Right? And it's for leveling up your spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? But like your spirit is like in this simulation that is creating all of this, right? And like, yeah, it's it's really nuts, but like, how can it be true if it's changeable kind of thing? And we're right. constantly changing. Our flesh, our psyches are constantly in transit, in evolution, right? And they're evolving, hopefully, towards the state of the spirit or like the highest level of the spirit, right? They're evolving towards that so I can realize himself and wake up, right? And, and it's nuts because, like, essentially our body is still, like, our true body. And this is why, like, in, in energy work, you essentially, like, carve out the exact blueprint of what's going on energetically and your true sun state version. And then you cast off the garments of mortality, right? Because you exist in that. You hold that space and allow everything else, like, change, you know? And it's essentially, <laughs> like, discovering what's still. This, the, the unmoved creates the moved. It's like the thing that's like still in, and then it's creating everything that's happening. It's really, it's really nuts. It goes yeah. really deep. Yeah. <laughs> the bottomless body. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure me and Lucius. Yeah. Um, are kindred. He talks just like me. Check this out. It's kind of it's kind of strange. He does talk to like you. Right here. This is all hermetics right there. But I think it's maybe chapter two. Pain checks man in the midst of senseless enjoyment. Makes him ponder fate. <coughs> this is prophecy about the day of the awakener. This is a crazy one. Wow. Lucius is a great book. How do I start every video? My friends. Yeah. Chapter 2, Book of Lucius. My friends, the power of the Holy Spirit has led you here and directed your footsteps so that you may be well guided in ascending the heights of divinity. No others shall be admitted to our circle for so profound a subject as dealt with here would be profaned by the presence of many. You know, like anyone listening to this that's not with it, it's just so profane to them. Yeah. This is the vision of the Holy Spirit. This is like the mystery school of the Colburn right here. It talks about the great path, the true way towards spiritual development. And he talks about matter and mortality and immortality and the supreme spirit of fucked up. But The laws.
the mystery of rebirth. Yeah. This is the central secret of all time. Dude, Lucius is literally like the fucking man. He's just laying down the twice born mysteries. Like, this is what Jesus talks about. This is what Hermetics talks about. This is what Thoth talks about. This is what everything. It's like the rebirth. Like, into spiritual consciousness and spiritual awareness. Like, the true rising of Kundalini and Shakti. When your third eye opens. When you're fully incarnated, raw spiritual being. Like, at that next level, the twice born mysteries right here. Right. And Lucius just breaks it down. <laughs> like, that's what a man god is. The soul spirit, once freed, can rise above all denser material things and cannot penetrate, though it cannot penetrate the upper spheres of creation of the Holy Spirit, but it can rise above all material things, just like Hermes, like casting off the robes of mortality. And, like, yeah. Coming on live. And to anyone else reading this, like, <laughs> the unenlightened man is unaware of anything beyond his limiting mortal wall or any th or outside the scope of his own ideas and interpretations. Yet his ideas are clouds of preconceived prejudice and his interpretations deceptive illusions because he has nothing in his mind that is rooted in truth. This is why it's so hard to talk to people. Right? Mm -hmm. And he's unaware of anything beyond the mortal wall. His only things true be are everything beyond the mortal wall. Right. He is dead to reality and toned within himself. And this is the shell around man right now. We must untome ourselves. Yeah. This higher knowledge has been gained by those who have built up their spiritual powers so that they could enter into direct communication with the sphere above. Their sacrifices and self-disciplines, they so refined and strengthened their soul spirits that they could penetrate to the place where the light of truth is shown clearly that they were not misled uh, is easily provable. Oh. Bro. Like the gnosis that flows out of, that flows out of you, flows out of me. That's, that's, that's what it's talking about right there. Life force and that man should never forget the most important aspect of his soul spirit. <laughs> it has a book for Jesus's his whole stories in here too. What is this? The Colburn Bible. Oh. It's the most nuts book out there. <laughs> the Britain book is really good. The Book of Wisdom is insane. Um, maybe oh, this is. Just reading? Lucius. So, if you are a prophet chosen to guide, do not exceed the scope of your authority or seek to describe things beyond the reach of your light. Go forward with courage and confidence, and the voice of the divine will teach you the signs along the road and make. Clear their meanings. Yeah. They were the prophets and preachers. Book of Wisdom. It's really crazy. It's like a guidebook for like the elect. Yeah. Prayer is an exercise of spirit. Oh, I love this. Only the good religion will stand forth and declare that man, given a cause sufficiently great, will be unconquerable. In the days of its awakening, the good religion will require, will require leaders, and these will need to, rem to be men of exceptional qualities. They will have to devote themselves to its cause without any thought of self-aggrandizement. Many men deceive themselves into thinking their desire for leadership is to benefit others. But in fact, they are really seeking self-esteem and power. Some cannot even see that their true incentives and their innermost thoughts because of the cloud of hypocrisy. Such men are not desirable leaders. 
the great path of the true way and the good religion must of the good religion the path that the good religion must tread will not be easy one and all who follow it will need to dedicate every effort and the last reserves of resourcefulness to its cause the faint hearted will have no place in it for a cause so great will need the utmost sacrifice of person and purse this is talking about the tribe mm -hmm. the great path of the true way 117 super synchronistic these are men who are vainglorious leaders knowing only outward and superficial values so this is talking about the vainglorious yeah. yeah many such as these cannot even find the right direction oh, 11 8 here we go when men are half-hearted in a cause or indifferent about the achievement of its objective they are denied a true leader so it's really fucking needing something wanting something success is the result of necessity and if the, and being committed to it like committing to responsibility and taking it on with others if the leader is blind and he and those who follow him land up in the trip in the ditch the true leader is a man to whom all will follow whom all who follow can look up to in every way A man to whom all who follow, who follow him, can look up to him in every way. Where there are no true men capable or worthy of leadership, strive to be such a man yourself. If you dedicate yourself to service and not self-esteem, if you recognize your own shortcomings and limitations, um, it is not arrogance. I forgot that part. Anyways, I, I, I just wanted to read one, the, one more, find the right one. Whatever. Book of Lucius. The Sons of Fire is a crazy book. Oh, man. Stop there. Pick it up from that. You like this book? It's not the next shade. Yeah, I've been meaning to read through some of this with you. It's it. There's like I have like 400 pages like fucking bookmarked. Yeah. It's like, but there's such crazy ones that I haven't even like haven't even found yet. There's it's crazy this book. So crazy. Sacred really Register is the Sons of Fire. The book. The Britain book, the Book of Wisdom, and the Book of Lucius are insane. It's insane. One after another. This is a really good book. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. Okay.